So, folks, one of the things that's been happening for a long time is a real tension between MAGA on the one hand and Fox News on the other. And tonight it has led to the downfall of Fox, bankruptcy and all of that, studios down, shutting down, all of a sudden because of the lies they told for Donald Trump. Right. And lying is one thing, but the specifically the actionable ones. And so what we have is the growing tension and then this bombshell news about all of this. They were mad about a fact check CNN did about them, but it was that very fact check that nailed the coffin of Fox News and further cemented the exact penalties again that we saw late last year or last year at some point when they got the, the massive lawsuit and the settlement against them for hundreds and hundreds of millions. And then the nail is done. Fox is over tonight. Watch all of this. It explains it in detail how this is the destruction of Fox News Network and all of that. Every second of this essential, it includes fights between Trump and Fox, them trying to defend him at the same time, showing the incoherence and critically how their fighting of fact checks has doomed them. He also went after his former White House press secretary, Kayleigh McEnany, right. for saying something that you know. I went back and looked at what exactly it was that she had said, because before she'd said something nice about Ron DeSantis. And last night, she kind of just said something that was accurate about what happened. This is what she told uh, viewers. I'd go home and I'd look under the hood. And when you look under the hood of our Fox News voter analysis data, you find that 32 percent of Republicans say we wouldn't we won't vote for Trump. I've got to unite the party. That's the argument Nikki Haley's making. And number two, I would look. Nikki Haley won independence, according to Fox News voter analysis, 59 to 33. He called her a rhino for that, Republican in name only, and told her to save her advice for, for someone else, for Nikki Haley. Because it's a warning shot to anybody else who might be around him who is or who was once around him and is seen as having uh, cred with the with the right and with the MAGA movement for saying anything that's based in fact that he doesn't like. That's all that is. The independents were who de decided the election in 2020. And then two really big numbers that matter that have jumped from Iowa. 43% of her supporters in Iowa said, I won't vote for him in the general election. That went up to 70 percent in New Hampshire. And then the question in the exit polls about what happens if Donald Trump is convicted of a felony, right? He has these 91 uh, counts out there. In Iowa, 32 percent said that they wouldn't support him. And that number jumped to 50 percent. All right. You so cannot win a general Trump. election with those kinds of numbers. And that's the case that Nikki Haley's making and why these Republican donors will continue well, to pump money into an alternative because there are Republicans who are extremely dissatisfied. Okay, but here's why I say this. This was actually a fairly good night for Joe Biden. When you look at our voter analysis, only 10% said, I would not vote for Joe Biden if he's the nominee. He won a plurality of voters who said he was too old. He won a majority of voters who are upset about the Gaza war. So the divides in the Democrat party, and this is a small sample size, but perhaps aren't as stark as one would think. But when you look at the Republican Party, seven in 10 Nikki Haley voters said, I would not vote for Trump. There was a Des Moines Register poll, 43% said, no, I wouldn't vote for Trump. If I'm Trump, I sit back and I exclusively focus on the general election. I take the posture of a presumptive nominee. I focus on number one, uniting the party, and number two, winning the independence, which Nikki Haley won 55 to 39%. That's what I would do. Nikki Haley, I mean, the closest margin is 30% in the states ahead. For all intents and purposes, he's the presumptive nominee. You know, in the 25th... But what was proven last night is that Trump is going to have a huge problem in November. Guys, this is all about the general election. We need winners. I want to win Senate seats and, and, and House seats and governorships. I want a, a, my candidate for president to win by double digits so we carry momentum in, not have some sort of nail-biter where we, we thought we were going to sure. win in 22. We lost. We thought we were going to win in 20. We lost. So let's get somebody that wins with a mandate. And so, that's Governor, one of the so, Governor, just let me... Uh, quick question here. You just you just called President Trump, who what 50 percent in Iowa and just beat uh, Nikki Haley by 12 points. So I think he's an excellent candidate, one of the best candidates uh, that I've seen in a while. If you look at her resume, just beat her by 12. And you think he's the weakest candidate oh, in the general election? Yeah, yeah. Against Biden, of course. Yeah, yeah. And that when that data but, just showed but, it right there. But Nikki yeah. Haley, who does does have, I think, a seven point lead in the real clear average head to head with Biden. 
You, uh, the second person who does good is Donald Trump, who has not lost to Biden head to head in the last five major polls. He does better than Ron DeSantis. No, but he only lost to Biden in the last major election and then yeah. lost oh. to Biden's candidates in right. 2022. Remember when, when Biden's the president, you're supposed to have a big comeback in right. the midterms and we got crushed. I think you make a good point, but would you say one of the reasons why the things are different now? We don't have what would a Biden presidency look like we have a look at what a Biden yeah, it's, it's awful. is which you compare the four years to the three years is why I believe Trump is so viable today do you feel differently no 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 look uh, I, Trump has his years as presidency to show much more success than Biden there's no question about that but again it's a nail-biter and Biden could still win, which means Kamala Harris is the next president. Come on, guys. This is this is real stuff. Right. And that's what we're risking. Why not get behind Nikki Haley, who wins in a landslide, who brings conservative right. values to the White House and carries all these other opportunities with her? I think you're quoting that CNN poll from a couple of weeks ago where she would win uh, in a general by 17 points. Uh, let me ask you this. Wall, Wall Street Journal. But, oh, yeah. Wall yeah, Street yeah, Journal. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I knew it was someplace yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. Um, on Sunday night, uh, I followed you guys around. You were campaigning for Nikki Haley. And I know we were at uh, Exeter High School. And yeah. I, I asked you, because there was some speculation months ago, that you might run for president. Oh, and I asked why you didn't. And That's killed me spreading rumors. Uh, why <laughs> Is there a possibility down the road? Or why didn't you do it last time? No, look, I, I think it's time. pretty clear. Washington and I don't see... I that's a bunch of elitists. They want to get behind Donald Trump. I like outsiders. I like people that, that, that do things a little bit different. They, that's what Nikki, Nikki does. I'm going to go back into the private sector. I just want to help her as much as I can. I want to show, help show America a new path and a new vision, not just the old, same old school stuff. See, you think that they, the Nikki Haley can get moderates independents. So you have a strong argument. Obviously you can. Do you yeah. think that she could ever win over MAGA Republicans over Donald Trump? Oh, uh, over Donald Trump? Well, look, no, Donald MAGA and Donald Trump, that's the brand, right? And that's fine. And he's got that core, that 30, 40 percent, whatever it is. Um, when you go forward again, if she, she wasn't even in, considered in the race two months ago. So this is really just getting started. And that's why New Hampshire is the first in the nation primary. You don't end and call it a, a race you know, when, when somebody what, is gaining what momentum. Chances, what are the chances if he has more delegates and he ends up getting the nomination that he would pick her as vice president? Oh, I, I don't even have to ask him. I have no idea. But uh, again, how about this? How about we start with a debate? That would I mean, be wouldn't great. it be nice if, yeah. if we actually had a Fox debate where the president actually had to get on the stage and answer great. questions? Yeah. Right. The fact that you guys want to coronate him uh, before he's even stepped on the debate. Well, well, you know what? That's not fair. That's, That's not, not fair. fair you can't say that we're Coron coronating. No, a coronation is a royal family. Okay, Ronna McDaniel. How about Ronna? Uh, uh, let's call the elitists in Washington, the All political right. establishment, want to okay. coronate them. Right. They don't want to have a debate. Yeah. Listen, there's no debate. We had a great time in New Hampshire. Governor, thank you very this much. This has been a ball. Thank Thanks, you. Governor. And you are a fantastic politician, by the way. <laughs> he is. That's why I love this guy. You are. That's why I love this guy. ...that are voting for Mickey Haley, that some of them have voted for Ron DeSantis, who maybe is more in his lane. But the Nikki Haley voter, are they going to try to get them, do you think? Well, I'm certainly not an advisor to the Trump campaign, <laughs> but... It is. You know, we talk in the millions of votes when we're talking about the general election, but it actually comes down to the tens of thousands, right? The margins in Georgia, in Arizona, in Michigan, in Pennsylvania, it's minute, right? It can be the difference between whether you came out and you criticized your opponent's dress, which some could interpret as demeaning a woman, again, which is obviously something that he suffers from, or just making a little offhanded comment that someone says, you know what, I'm going to sit home, or actually, I want four more years of Joe Biden. So yes, it would be smart, as it always was when he was president, if he would listen to Kaylee about this. But he has an uncontrollable narcissism and rage about him when he feels insulted. And it's appealing to the base to say, we love it. He's a counterpuncher. But you've now lost a general election. You've presided over the loss of this, the Republican Senate, the Republican House. Uh, the abortion that's been on the ballot seven times, Democrats have swept it in all of that, and he has not moderated at all. And, and frankly, I don't think it's in him for him to be able to do it for more than 20 minutes. You know, Charles, you talked about uh, the issues here and how immigration here is, is at the top, but it also is an economic issue, and right. it crosses all boundaries. And it is a weakness for President Biden and the Democrats. Uh, Dean Phillips talks about this on the trail, and he talks about how Democrats demean MAGA voters. He talked about it with me today, saying that, you know, it's just strange that they're talking about a, a group of voters like that. Yeah, and, and, and I don't think it's narcissism. I think if it's, you've lived in New York long enough, you know it's maybe a New York thing, 
someone punches you, you punch him back harder. That's the way I grew up in Harlem. Not so, if the country's at stake, right? He won. He became president of the United States uh, with that same personality. I, I don't think that, you know, he, listen, I think it's worse with Biden calling MAGA. Biden's anger and vitriol and hatred for MAGA is far more worse than President Trump's individual battles with someone who crosses him. That is something that is really detrimental to this country, that the president of the United States despises half of the United States. President Biden, I, I said earlier today, I just for about a week ago, I had a segment coming up, so I, I Googled Biden hates MAGA. Nothing but article, articles after articles after articles. He has expressed hatred for Who's half of the country. Who's writing those articles? It doesn't matter. The, the and look it's at not. Him. Because, because the bottom line is he says it. He has vitriol for them. And so does MSNBC, and so does CNN, and so does the New York Times. They have vitriol for half of the nation. They don't look at them like fellow Americans. And it's unfortunate. They try to paint them as racist. That all the things that they do to their fellow Americans who simply want a safe home, a safe community, for the children have prosperity. They want the same thing, but they demean them all the time. That's why I think Phillips was so intriguing, because he went to a rally to find out for himself. And guess what? Golly, these are some pretty cool people. And that's They're his, just like that's us. exactly what Jamie, Jamie Dimon, Dimon said this week Davos. as well. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's smart to understand. And also you see the shift that's happening, right? You, you look at at black voters, Hispanic voters, college women, Latinos who have moved towards Trump. Yes. So it, it, it's no longer that people are in these boxes based on what, what their gender is or what they look like. They, they appear to want, you know, a safe country and they appear to want uh, a good economy, regardless of, of what label they have. That's completely fine. And I know that the lines have shifted dramatically. And But Joe Biden's responsible for a lot of that. You say that he's demeaned half the country. First of all, it's 74 million people that voted for Donald Trump. And he is explicit every time he talks about the MAGA movement to say that this is a subsection of the Republican Party, which is borne out in elections when you see people voting against Donald Trump. And this idea that but what about the, the people way voting that Democrats... For him? What about the people voting for yeah, him? He I'm gives teleprompter speeches. I, I mean, you have to understand yes, that it's... Yes, but he is talking about insurrectionists. No. He is, yes, no, he is. No, no, no. He Why went, is he talking about January 6th? And he calls... He says Donald MAGA Trump like it's a swear Jessica, word, you know, he has, instead he has, of he a, a slogan. If you get called regularly, He's and which Democrats do, States. thugs, He's a commander in pedophiles, Why can't he call the border a crisis while he's, while he's denigrating That's and castigating America? About, no, I, no, the voters are talking about no, that, Jessica. But Excuse this me, point is about demeaning voters. The President of the United States, the Commander-in-Chief, went to Philadelphia a year and a half ago with a Marine posted behind him. I saw. And gave a decidedly political speech where he insulted a, a large part of the country. And I've said many times on this network, and I'll say it again tonight, if people, a lot of people, spend a fraction of the time that they spent obsessing over Donald Trump the person, learning one thing about the Trump voter, things may be very different. This is Joe Biden's version of Hillary's deplorable and irredeemable. And here's one thing. We're going to be talking about this for many months. So we have to move on. I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all.